In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Risa Tecla link and how it's going to allow you to work bidirectionally between Risa 3D and Tecla, as well as Risa Connection and Tecla. Regarding Risa Connection, one of the workflows could be starting with a model in Risa 3D, taking it into Tecla where you can assign connections, sending those connections to Risa Connection for design to go ahead and meet the code requirements, and then sending those results right back into the Tecla model. Now, if there are any project scope changes along the way, we can simply check all the connections and resize them if they're required based on any load changes or geometry changes in the model. And then once again, we can re-update the Tecla model connections. Version 9 of the Risa Tecla link currently supports various shear connections, moment connections, splice connections, vertical brace connections, and even HSST connections. Now that we have our Risa 3D model successfully brought into Tecla, we can now start to assign connections. The list of connections available for transfer between Risa Connection and Tecla is available on the Risa website. We can come over to the Applications and Components window and begin entering these codes that correspond to the particular connections. In this case, we can start with a simple shear plate. So once we click our shear plate connection button, we can zoom in and click on a girder and then the beam that's going to connect to it and once we zoom in we can see that we've applied a shear connection. Following the same methodology we can go ahead and apply some clip angles the same way. Simply enter the code 141 for a clip angle, click on the connection, click on the girder and then the beam connecting to the girder and again we can see we have a clip angle connection now. Since we had moment frames on our sample project, we can go ahead and start applying moment connections. In this case, we can use code 134 to go ahead and bring in some bolted moment connection types. In this case, we'll click on the column and then the beam that frames into it. And when we zoom in, we can see we've now got a bolted moment connection applied. For the moment frame on the other side of our building, we can go ahead and add a simple direct weld type moment connection by using the code 182. In the same way, we'll click the column and then the beam that frames into it. When we zoom in, we'll notice here we have a shear plate for erection and direct welds for the flanges, both top and bottom, as well as transverse stiffeners for this beam to column moment connection. Lastly, we can apply a column splice connection by using the code 77 to apply this to two columns. We simply click on one column, the next, and now we see we have a moment column splice connection. Now that we have our connections assigned to our Tecla model, all we need to do is press the connection export button and all of these connections and the forces that were brought over from the Risa 3D model will be sent over into Risa connection for design where we can then optimize these connections and bring the findings back into Tecla for final detailing. We can see here we're presented with all of the connection types that we had assigned back in Tecla. What we'd want to do now is go ahead and solve the entire project to see where we stand in terms of uh, unity checks based on each load combination or the governing load combination in this case. And we can see here that we've got a failure but for a unity check less than 1.0, which 99% of the time means that there's a geometry issue. In this case, it, we can tell that it's most likely the bolt edge distance in this case, which is something we can revise quite easily. So let's take a closer look to see what exactly is causing this issue. And yes, it does look like it's the bolt minimum edge distance, so that is for the moment plate itself. So what we can do is click in a 2D view, and we're presented with a nice front view of this connection to go ahead and easily change the dimensions that we need to manipulate in order to meet our code requirements for the minimum bolt edge distance. In this case, let's go ahead and change the center dimension to three and a half inches. And we'll probably run into issues with this plate edge distance, so we'll go ahead and change that to something a little bit bigger, say two inches. Now we can recheck the connection, and you can see here now we're at a passing with a unity check of 0.3. 
to illustrate the changes that can be made in Risa Connection and then be brought back into Tecla for final detailing, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this Moment Connection. It's got a bolted top and bottom flange. Now we can see here that our Unity check is at zero. That's because we didn't have any moment brought over. But what we can do is say in the event that this really needed a lot more moment capacity, that we needed to add a lot more bolts, what we can do is simply click on our drop down menu here and we'll just add nine bolts, which is way over the top. But just for illustrative purposes as to what can be brought back into Tecla, we'll go ahead and now use the export to Tecla function. We can see here that we have a report. The connections are being updated. And when we come back into Tecla, we can go to this connection and see here now that we've got the nine rows of bolts that we added. These types of modifications can be made for any of the other supported connection types. So this gives us a brief look at how you can implement the Risa Tecla link into your current workflow and help expedite your design and detailing duties. For more information about the Risa Tecla link, please visit risa.com.